wrist, forearm, elbow, humerus, shoulder. <laughs> it's essentially the same, same thing, but we're dealing with lower extremities, and yes, they do have different names. Uh, but you will come to find out that a lot of things that we do for the lower extremity is very similar to that we, that we do with the upper extremity. Um, same thing happens here is most of this is going to be done tabletop because we're talking about anatomy that's less than 10 centimeters and as you approach the knee, now we're going to start using grid or the table bucky. Okay. All right, so here we have the lower limb. We've got the foot, we've got the ankle joint. The lower leg, which is your two bones, tibia, fibula, tibia, fibula, knee, femur, and then we'll talk about the bones, of, bones of the hip later on. All right, so here's the anatomy of the foot. See any similarities to that of the anatomy of the hand? Mm -hmm. Okay, the toes—they're also called phalanges. Okay, uh, each of the toes. Two to four, I'm sorry, two to five, you should have three. You'll have a distal, a middle, and a proximal. What is the joint between the phalanges called? Interphalangeal Inter 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 joints. Same thing here, okay? Interphalangeal joints of, of the toes. Uh, the great toe, very similar to that of your thumb. Only two phalanges. And instead of having two interphalangeal joints, the great toe, or toe number one, will only have one interphalangeal joint, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now what's different from the hand in the anatomical position, the thumb is going to be on the lateral side. The great toe is going to be in the medial side. The hand we have metacarpals, on the foot we have metatarsals, and there are five of them. Just like in the hand, the distal end of the bones is the head, <laughs> then you have the body, and then you have the shaft. The base, you mean, right? What did I say? Body and shaft? Yeah. Thank you. Body and the shaft. <laughs> body and the base. Okay, body and the base. Okay, um, so we have 14 phalanges, five metatarsal bones, and then we have seven tarsals for a total of 26. I'm going to cover the tarsal bones on, on a separate slide. So obviously I'm not going to spend too much time on the toes and the metatarsals because again very similar to that of, of the hand. Um, so we have the joints. The joints between the phalanges is known as to be interphalangeal joints. Toes two to five, you have your distal interphalangeal joint, which is the most furthest, and then the most proximal is going to be a proximal interphalangeal joint. As we said, on the first digit, you only have one. You don't have a distal, you don't have a proximal, it's just an interphalangeal joint. Now, the joint articulation between the phalanges and the metatarsals, instead of metacarpal phalangeal joint, we have metatarsal phalangeal joint, yes. Are the tarsals considered the ankle, or like the carpals are considered the ankle? The, the joint between the lower leg and the tarsal bones is the ankle joint, which is analogous to the wrist joint. But like, I can't remember what the Bones in the foot, so it's going to be a total of 20. Oh, I see what you're saying. She's saying, is the ankle going to be a part like, because uh, the question was, I mean, how many bones are in the hand, but it wasn't including the wrist itself? Oh, including the tarsal bones, okay. Yeah, so if I was saying, yeah, just I'll, I'll make it specific on, on the foot. I'll make it specific on the foot whether it, or whether it does or not include the, the tarsal bones. Right? Is that what you're asking me? Because you're talking about the phalanges and the metacarpals. When I said how many, how many bones were there, mm -hmm. I didn't include the wrist joint. Right, so I'll, I'll be more clear on the next one. I don't think I'll ask you another question like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Dr. Ed. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair enough. Okay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, where was I? Okay, so the interphalangeal joints, and then we were talking about the articulation between the phalanges and the tarsal is the metatarsal phalangeal joints. The articulation between the tarsals and the metatarsal is the tarsal metatarsal joint. Okay? Questions? Um, okay, sesamoid bones. Okay, just like in the hand, uh, you have those two little bones usually found around the first digit or the thumb. It looked like a, it looked like a, a, a an avulsion fracture. It was a separate bone. Same thing happens with the foot. You also have sesamoid bones that are two located also around the first toe around the first toe, or more specifically around the uh, metatarsal joint, you have the sesamoid bones, and they're gonna be found on the plantar surface or the bottom of your foot, okay? So they're embedded in tendons. What's the difference between a tendon and a ligament? Tendon attached atta 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 muscle to bone. Tendon is muscle to bone, the ligament is bone to bone. Bone bone, bone, okay? So they're usually embedded in the tendons, so associated with the muscle. Uh, they're present near join, uh, the joints, and again, these particular sesamoid bones are found on the bottom or the plantar surface of the foot. All right, so let's tie, let's let's cover the, the tarsals. The tarsals. I am going. So we've got we've got three cuneiforms. You've got one cuboid, one navicular, one talus, and one calcaneus. Um, let me see. Okay. You have three cuneiforms. They are associated with toes number one, number two, and number three. Okay? One, two, and three. The cuneiforms are called your first cuneiform, second cuneiform, and the third cuneiform beginning on the first toe. Okay, that's the order that it goes. So the first goes with the first, second goes with the second, third goes with the third. First, second, and third, the other names are called the lateral, starting over here now, lateral cuneiform, the middle or intermediate cuneiform, and then the, if one's lateral, then the other one is what? Medial. It's gonna be the medial, okay? So medial, intermediate, or middle, and then your lateral cuneiform. Okay, again, associated with toes one, two, and three. Or in this case, metatarsals one, two, and three, bless you. The cuboid, the cuboid now is associated with toes number four and five, or metatarsals four and five. Okay, so the cuboid articulates with number four and number five. Now, when you learn the relationship of the tarsal bones, it'll, it'll help you better understand which anatomy you're looking at when you are examining an x-ray. So posterior to the three cuneiforms is the navicular bone, the navicular bone. So posterior to that, you have the navicular. Where have we heard that term before? And where? The wrist. Okay, so we have a navicular on the wrist and we have a navicular on the foot, but to distinguish one from the other, we change the name of the navicular on the wrist to what? The scaphoid, okay? So scaphoid pertains to the wrist, navicular now pertains to the foot. All right, so we said posterior to the three cuneiforms, you're gonna find the navicular. Posterior to the cuboid is the calcaneus bone. What's another term for the calcaneus? Angle. The heel, okay? okay? So right behind that is the heel bone, okay? Lastly is the talus bone. The talus is what's going to form the ankle joint, okay? The talus is what's going to articulate with the tibia and the fibula of the lower leg, okay? But in the articulation of the talus, the talus is going to sit right on top of the heel bone or the calcaneus, and then anteriorly is going to articulate with the navicular bone. Any questions? All right. 
And then we also have mnemonics here too. I don't know how they came up with this one. It's a little ridiculous, but. Uh, the tarsal mnemonic, I, and it be begins with the heel. So calcaneus, and we're moving anteriorly to the talus, the cuboid, the navicular, and the cuneiforms. It's come to Colorado the next three Christmases. If you guys can come up with a more cool sounding mnemonic, let me know, and I will change my slides, and I will give you credit for it. Mm, I'm much <laughs> Unless you guys are okay with this, then I'll stick with this. Come to Colorado the next three Christmases. All right, so let's begin with the anatomy of the calcaneus or the heel bone. Okay, so starting at the very, very front, the very front of it. There, there are a lot of parts to it, right? Okay, so the very front, we've got a smooth indentation or surface. It's known as the anterior articular surface. Uh, there's two parts to it. You have the anterior and then you have the middle articular surface. That particular area there uh, is the articulation with the cuboid bone, the cuboid bone. Now the cuboid bone, is that going to be posterior to the, uh, the lateral aspect of the foot or the medial aspect of the foot? Lateral. The okay, cuboid's gonna be lateral, so we're talking about metatarsals four and five. Okay. How can this medial? So the way we're looking at that bone is like from a bird's eye view? Yeah, bird's eye view. Give me just a second. So the middle is a cuboid. How did that happen? I think this is a typo. That should be. What are we looking at here? The calcaneus. Cuboid. Give me just a second, guys, okay? I don't know if this is correct. Okay, there should be a Calcaneus, cuboid. This is medial, so this should be lateral. sure I understand this before I give you this information. So we have the calcaneus anterior to the cuboid. I think that's a left calcaneus. No. Yeah, I think it's flipped. Yeah. That's the only thing that would make sense. <clears throat> There's another picture after that slide. How do they do that? There you go. It's mislabeled. So th this is labeled correctly. It's just, yeah. This is the left and this is the right. All right. Yep. It's based off the book, and the book labeled it as a right calcaneus. Yes. So it's actually a left in the picture in the book. FYI. Okay. All right. So this is correct. Mm -hmm. um, so can you guys mark that on your on your slides? So this is the right. Okay, so not to confuse this with the left. I find they do that a lot with the book. Mm -hmm. And the book is mislabeled. Yeah. Yeah, so for this particular this, this uh, is right, this is the particular left, yeah. uh, heel here, this is the left. And in, in this in this slide right here, that's a right heel. So in the book page that's why two one four, that's, it, yeah, that's exactly. a figure six point six, that's a left calcaneus. Is 
Is this the same exact uh, picture that you have in your book, yeah. though? It and is. It's labeled as a right. Okay, and this one, too, that's the same exact picture you have exactly. in your book. Exactly. Okay. All right. Did everybody get that then? So this is a right. This is a left. Okay. 214 of the new text. Figure 6.6. All right, so and the anterior, anterior and the middle, middle articular surfaces of the heel or the calcaneus articulates with the cuboid. All right, right below that is a bony projection that is commonly seen in an x-ray. It's known as the sustentaculum talli. Sustentaculum talli, again, a bony projection most commonly seen in x-rays. Um, now, most of these bony projections, there is a purpose of it. Okay. These bony projections have uh, a rough surface for, again, attachment of ligaments and tendons. Okay, so there's a purpose for that. All right. Um, then we go a little bit lower here. We have a medial process and we have a lateral process over here. Again, very rough surfaces for attachments of ligaments and also tendons. And the very back of that is the tuberosity the tuberosity of the calcaneus. Now, this is important in anatomy in that what do you think is going to be attached to that particular area of the heel? The Achilles what? Achilles tendon. Achilles tendons. So that's where the Achilles attaches to, is that tuberosity. Now we have uh, the posterior articular surface, okay? And this is where it gets confusing. It is posterior because we're talking about going from front to back. But this posterior articular surface is also on the top of the calcaneus, okay? So this is also found on the superior surface of the calcaneal bone. And this uh, articulates with the talus bone. So here is the posterior, which is located here, but it's also superior and articulates with the talus bone. So the talus bone sits on top of that. Okay. And then lastly here is another bony projection. It's known as the trochlear process. Okay. Do we have any questions here on the heel? All right, so what we want to do here is identify the tarsals A and B. A couple of slides ago, we said be familiar with the orientation and the anatomy. So when we're looking behind the three cuneiforms, what's going to be posterior to that? The navicular. Okay, it's going to be the navicular. So this is the cuneiforms that are superimposed, you can only see two and three here. One is going to be right behind it. Okay, so this is two and three. And right behind that is going to be cuneiform number one. So, in back of that is going to be the navicular. In back of the cuboid, and we know this is the cuboid because of the articulation with four and five. Mm -hmm. So, right behind that is going to be your calcaneus. So, what is B? Cuboid. I just said it. <laughs> it's a cuboid. Okay, it's a cuboid. All right. Right on top of the calcaneus is your talus bone, and it is the fibula and the and the tibia that articulates with the talus. Okay. Any questions here? Now, one more area that I want to cover here is known as the sinus tarsi. The sinus tarsi. It is a tunnel. It is an opening between the calcaneus and the, uh, the talus, located right here. And I will show you, show you that again later on, on a real radiograph. But it's a hole. It looks like a hole. And there you will find um, the passageway for nerves, blood vessels, and other types of uh, anatomy. And it does also help in the support and balance of the foot. Okay.
All right, so let's look at this. Uh, what are, what is D? First cuneiform. Okay, first cuneiform. Give me another name for the first cuneiform. Medial. Medial. Okay, it's the medial. It's the medial. C is the intermediate, intermediate or middle. middle or second cuneiform. And then B is going to be the lateral or third cuneiform. Posterior to the three cuneiforms is what bone? The fibular. Fibular, that's A. And then what is E? Cuboid. It's a cuboid. Okay, and then posterior to the cuboid is going to be the calcaneus. Calcaneus or the heel. All right. So uh, the bottom one here is we have the uh, lateral of the foot. Um, so right anterior to the talus. Right anterior to the talus is what? The navicular. The navicular, and in front of the navicular is going to be your superimposed, superimposed what? Cuneiforms. Okay. All right, so C and D are your cuneiforms that are superimposed. You can't see uh, B, because again, it's, it's behind that. All right. <clears throat> arches of the foot. Your foot has three arches. Three arches. Uh, you have two longitudinal arches, and then one transverse arch. Your medial arch, your medial arch, and towards the first toe, it's going to be more concaved. It's going to be more concave. Your lateral arch, your lateral longitudinal arch, is going to be more flat. So when we're talking about the arch of your foot, we're generally referring to the medial side of it. Although the lateral still has an arch, it's just not as, as dominant as the medial. And then from Medial to lateral, you have your transverse arch. Okay, so three arches of the foot. Uh, what do we have here? Surfaces of the foot. Okay, so the top of the foot, the top of the foot is known as your dorsum or anterior when we're talking about the true anatomical position. Remember, your true anatomical position is palms forward. Toes forward, but it's almost like you're tippy toeing. Okay, so that then becomes your anterior surface. This is also known as your dorsum or dorsum pedis surface. On the back side of it, again, anatomical position, tippy toe, the back side of your foot is the posterior or the plantar surface. Plantar surface. Now, in terms of projection, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because sometimes we'll say AP, sometimes we'll say PA, which becomes a little bit confusing again. So if we're doing an AP projection, the correct term for an AP projection of the foot is dorsal plantar projection, entering the dorsal surface and exiting the plantar surface. Okay, dorsal plantar projection. Therefore, the opposite, if we were doing PA, going from the posterior to the anterior surface, it's known as, it's just the opposite now. It's a plantar, plantar or plantodorsal projection. All right. Motions of the foot and the ankle. Dorsiflex, toes towards you. You're flexing it towards you. Okay. Plantar flexion is toes away, pointing your toes away. Inversion is you're twisting the foot towards the great toe or medially. You're twisting your foot medially. And we also have eversion, which is twisting of the foot laterally. Now, in some ankle studies, we will do stress tests where we will purposely and deliberately turn the foot either towards the middle for eversion or towards the outside for eversion. Okay, inversion and eversion, or Latin term, varus and valgus. Varus and valgus. All right, 
Any questions about the foot? Okay, let's cover the ankle joint. The ankle joint is formed by three bones. What is the first bone of the tarsals that are involved? The talus. It's going to be the talus. Okay? And then the two remaining bones are going to be of your lower leg. Lateral it's going to be your tibia and then your fibula. Your tibia is going to be your medial bone. It's the larger of the two. Okay? Your tibia is going to be the medial, the larger of the two. Laterally is going to be the fibula. Those three bones forms the ankle joint. Now, note it here over here. We also have this is going to be your anterior view, and this is going to be your lateral view. All the things that I want you to make note of is that when you're looking at the ankle laterally, the fibula is going to be more posterior and projects inferior when compared to the tibia. Okay, so this is the lateral, anterior, your toes are pointing out this way. So your toes are this way. Your fibula is going to be projected lower and more posterior to the tibia. Now, all those called the ankle joint, more specifically, more specifically is known as the mortise. The mortise is, again, the, the articulation between the three bones, your talus, your tibia, and your fibula. So more specifically, it's known as the mortise. All right, the distal end of the tibia, the distal end of the tibia that forms the ankle joint that is known as the medial malleolus. And then the distal part of the fibula that forms the ankle joint is known as the lateral malleolus. Medial, uh, sorry, medial tibia lateral fibula. Is that the bone that we feel? Pardon me? Those are like the bones we feel, huh? Yes, no, those are the bones that you feel. Yes. Yeah, that's so that you not only can feel it, but you can also see it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Now we are looking at the ankle joint from the bottom up. From the bottom up. Okay. Here you have your tibia. Here you have your fibula. Underneath the tibia is a, a flat surface. So we're looking at this flat surface right here. So the very bottom of the tibia is a flat, smooth surface. This is known as your tibial plafond, tibial plafond. Every time I, th I see that, I think of that um, movie, what is uh, Napoleon Dynamite? <laughs> Remember his brother's girlfriend? LaFonda. What was her name? LaFonda. La yeah, so tibial <laughs> LaFonda. Okay, so that's the bottom surface, that's the bottom surface of the, uh, the tibia. Okay, so this is a smooth surface here, okay? Then you have the bony projection, which is the medial uh, malleolus. You have the bony projection on the tibial side. This is known as the, uh, the uh, lateral malleolus. Okay. So now we're looking at the space between the tibia and the fibula. Okay. The joint space. <coughs> In a true AP projection of an ankle, your toes are pointed up. So again, when we're taking an x-ray of your ankle, your toes are going to be pointed up. Your feet is going to be dorsiflexed with your toes pointing up. This is a true AP of the ankle. Now in a true AP of the ankle, you're not going to see the joint space very well. There's going to be some superimposition of the distal tibia and fibula. Okay, So there is going to be some slight superimposition of the tibia and fibula in a true AP projection. So if I wanted to evaluate this joint space, there is going to be a difference in 15 degrees to open that space up. So 
to straighten out this joint, if I wanted to look down at this joint, I would have to rotate my ankle medially about 15 to 20 degrees. Okay, 15 to 20 degrees. So when we rotate our ankle 15 to 20 degrees, now we're gonna open up that joint space between the tibia and fibula, okay? And then you can also see the spacing between the two bones and the talus. Looks like a socket, right? Nice and open. So it's open here and it's open here. When you rotate your feet medially between 50 to 20 degrees, this is known as the Mortise projection, AP Mortise projection. This is what it looks like when it's in a true AP. Toes pointing straight up, no rotation. Notice here there's going to be superimposition of the distal tibia and fibula. And then you're not going to see the space between the fibula and the talus. See, this is closed, this is closed, this is closed, this is closed. 15 to 20 degree rotation medially, now it's open, this is open. Yes? Are the toes still up for that one? The toes is going to be more in a relaxed. It's going to be relaxed. I apologize about my hands. Okay, it's going to be relaxed, and then turn medially. Okay. We'll cover that again on on the positioning part of it. Hey, any questions? Yes. When you mean rotate? Is that a medial deviation? It's just going to be a medial rotation. Yeah. So from here, you're just going to. It's going to be relaxed and turned in 15 to 20 degrees. So here's your AP. Here's your AP. Okay. It's going to be relaxed and then turned in 15 to 20 degrees medially. <clears throat> I'll cover that again. Okay. But again, make note true AP. You're going to have superimposition here and you're going to have superimposition here. 15 degrees, 15 to 20 degrees medial rotation, it now opens up the space between your tibia and fibula, and also opens up the space between your fibula and the talus. And again, this is kind of, I don't know why they do this. Um, does it look like two different patients? This gap right here?